Hi, my name is Brandon Borup, and I'm the percussion instructor at Amarillo College and Bushland ISD. And we're going to talk about the All Region A2 Number no. 2 Year C, the timpani part now. So, um, let's go ahead and start with a play along. I'll have my metronome set to a quarter note at 72, and it's also set to 4-4. Four, four. So it'll have a strong indication on beat one, and beats two, three, and four will all have a sound that is different than beat one. So here, let's give it a shot. So one, two, three. So let me just go ahead and start off with a couple of tips when playing timpani. First of all, um, this piece has a lot of rhythm going on and not so many rolls going on. So I'm going to choose a harder set of mallets so that I can get a nice articulation out of all of these 16th notes. I've also chosen the 32 inch drum and the 29 inch drum, and I've got them set right in front of me instead of to the side if I were playing all four drums. So this is another way that you can set yourself up for success. Remember whenever we're playing timpani that we need to be really particular about the playing zones and that we play closer to the edge than the center so that we can get a nice resonant sound. Um, also, on this etude, because there are not many rolls, I have chosen to use dampeners for this to help the uh, 16th note passages just sound a little bit clearer. And I'll go ahead and play a comparison of the two. Um, this will be the first three measures without any dampening on there and then I'll play it with and you choose for yourself if that's something that you would like to implement or if not. One, two, three. Now with the dampeners. dampening it just makes the 16th note clarity much easier for the listener to perceive so um, let's move on so let's go through it line for line like we did the other etudes so we just got done playing through the first line make sure that if you're using a metronome that you're starting on beat four especially if it's one that will indicate where beat one is otherwise it's gonna feel kind of wonky um, so, and I would definitely suggest that using a metronome that does indicate uh, beat one or it'll play in four four. So that way you have a way to check yourself. So, um, nothing too complicated in the first uh, two measures of the line. Uh, of course, we have the pickups on beat four. Um, the tuning of the drums will be A on the lower pitch, D on the higher pitch, okay? Um, and yeah, there are no crossovers. The only odd thing that might happen is that we have some double strokes in uh, measure two on beat four. Make sure that your second note of your double has good clarity and that we can't tell that you're doing doubles. We want it to sound as though we're still singling it, okay? Um, so yeah, let's play through that once with the metronome. So two, three, four, one. Good. Okay, let's take a look at the next line. So we've just got some quarter notes. I noticed that they are dotted. 
which means that they are supposed to be played short, correct? Um, and I think that the dampeners just kind of lend itself to having that sort of tone. I will dampen just a little bit uh, with my hands on the quarter notes just so that we don't have any bleed over, but really the dampeners do enough of, of a good job so that if you didn't want to do that, you would be able to get away with it. So. Notice that I dampen whenever I play the other hand. And whenever you dampen the timpani, uh, you want to be using the tips of your fingers. And I've learned over time to be able to palm the mallet between my uh, thumb and the palm of my hand, especially the ridge where my knuckles or my fingers start. I can really like hold it there pretty well and be able to do other things like do dampenings or whatever else I need to do on the timpani. Um, we do have a triplet in the second measure of the second line. So one to take, two take, three loudly, four, or hopper grass two take, pineapple four. So we just wanna make sure that we play that triplet correctly and not mistakenly play it as like one to take or uh, one teta, a grouping of two sixteenths tied to an eight in any fashion. So. I hear a lot, a lot, a lot of students make that mistake a lot of the times. So make sure that you're playing true triplets and check in with your band director if you have any questions about that. Okay, and then the third measure of the second line just has some more 16th note runs. And it does uh, resolve off of a left hand going into a roll but we'll talk about what sort of role to use here in a moment. But yeah, um, nothing too crazy inside of this one. Um, make sure that you know which hand is playing on which drum. For instance, the first two beats, the right hand strays away, I feel like, from the 32-inch uh, the drum, and then we have the opposite, where uh, in beats three and four, we're primarily playing on the upper drum, and the left hand is gravitating and getting away from playing it to the uh, bottom drum. So let's play it with a metronome. Just that measure by itself. One, two, ready, go. Two, again, take, go, take. So let's play that whole line together now. I'll count us off. One, two, ready, take, go, take. Good, good. Okay, let's take a look at the next line now. Um, it starts with a roll on the uh, bottom drum here, and there is a forte piano which means we're gonna attack the beginning of the roll and then back off really fast and then crescendo afterwards up to forte. So it'll sound like this. Notice I did it two different ways where I released on the third, uh, the bottom drum, the A, and I re uh, did it releasing onto the D. Technically, it's uh, notated to release onto the D, but a good way to practice it when you're just getting used to playing that sort of role um, is to maybe just release it on the one drum, make it a little less complicated. Now, let's talk about what sort of role I'm playing there. Um, whenever we play timpani, we're not gonna use a buzz style role. or a double stroke roll, we're going to be using a single stroke roll, which means we're gonna go right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, but very quickly. So, um, nothing too complicated there. Uh, we just wanna play fast singles. So. Um, moving on, later on, and on that line, measure two, we have some doubles on beat three, and then I, I like to think that there is a left-hand paradiddle that's played on the bottom drum. 
Take your time and get that measure to really flow and sound smooth, especially considering that there's a crescendo added to it as well. One, two, three, two, 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 three, two, three, two, three, two, three, two, three, So, um, and then there's nothing too special about that third measure on the third line. Other than that, I actually removed the dampening off of my... Uh, upper drum, the 29 inch drum, at the end of that measure. So I'll play one, take three, take four, and then I'll move on to the next measure. And that's because and I'm looking ahead and I see that the last note of the piece is a dotted half note, which is going to get three beats correct, um, but it's not rolled. And so in order for me to get the length that I would like to get out of that note, I'm going to remove my dampener prior to that just so I can get a really resonant tone from the drum that will last the entire three beats. So uh, let's practice that line, line three, together now with a metronome. One, two, ready, go. some connective tissue. Let's do that a bunch again. If you're using dampeners, reset that. And I'll count us off. One, two, ready, go. Okay. Now that we've played through that twice, let's take a look at the bottom line. So this is our loudest dynamic of the piece. So save a little bit for this moment right here. Um, we have what I would refer to as putta stickings, where it's right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left. And then we continue that same putta sticking uh, in the next measure, but at a 16th note format. Tugga da, tugga da, right, left, left, right, left, left. And then it finishes out with a few uh, 16th note singles. And as I mentioned before, there is a dotted half note right there. We want to make sure that we're cutting the drum off on beat four. I'm telling you right now, this is an easy way for you to earn points in your audition and advance to the next level. Because I guarantee you, your judge is going to be listening to see if you let that drum keep ringing or if you were observant of the rest on beat four. Yay, bell systems. <laughs> So, um, starting at measure nine, like I said before, we have the putadas. Right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, left, 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 uh, three measures together. One, two, four, TC Mo, go. Let's do that much again. One, two, ready, go. So, with these tips, I think you'll go really far and have a really great audition when you're auditioning for that region band. Please feel free to reach out to me or Amarillo College if you would like some more help with this. Um, my name is Brandon Bora, and thank you so much. Have a great day.